After OpenAI CEO Sam Altman released ChatGPT last December, it has outpaced social media titans such as Instagram and TikTok to become the fastest growing web platform in history. Based on this, some people think that everything Altman touches changes the world as we know it. However, Altman says this is far from the truth and hopes people find inspiration in his failures as much as his successes. By age 8, Altman already showed promise as a computing genius by learning how to make programs on his parents' Mac. Despite being a tech prodigy, Altman said growing up gay in middle America during the 90s and early 2000s was not the most awesome thing. Fortunately, Altman was able to connect to other like-minded people in the chat rooms of the early internet, and eventually moved to more open-minded California and attended Stanford University. Altman didn't last long at Stanford. After just two years, he dropped out to create Loop, a mobile app that let users share the locations with select people. Not long after, Altman attended the first batch of Paul Graham's Y Combinator, an incubator that would later become one of the most influential institutes in Silicon Valley. Y Combinator, also known as YC, provided Altman and his partners $18,000 in funding and a chance to pitch their company to Graham's richest friend at the end of the summer. In preparation for the pitch, Altman worked so hard over the next three months, he got scurvy, mainly because his diet consisted of ramen noodles and Starbucks coffee-flavored ice cream. After graduating from YC, the real work started to get looped off the ground. Back in 2005, only emergency services had access to GPS, which was essential for Loop's location sharing. Therefore, Altman had to hack GPS by convincing emergency services to share their technology, and then persuaded mobile phone companies to promote Loop. Despite the massive amount of effort, people were, to paraphrase Altman, more interested in laying on their couches, consuming content, and sharing their location with their friends. When he finally had to sell Loop in 2012, Altman had failed to graduate college and also failed to make his investors money from his first company. Despite this, Altman learned a valuable lesson. For new technology to resonate with the public, it can't be released so early that it seems strange. In other words, 18 to 24 months before people know they want something. Not long after Altman sold Loop, he broke up with his boyfriend of 9 years and was left wondering what he wanted to do with his life. Altman ended up starting his own venture capital firm, but quickly became disillusioned with the nature of the business, in which it was constantly convincing desperate startups to take his money for his own gain. Fortunately, Graham approached Altman and asked him to become YC's CEO in 2014. At just 28 years old, many people said Altman was too inexperienced to take over, especially because YC's company had a market value of $30 billion at the time. However, just a few years after accepting Graham's offer, those same naysayers were now professing that Altman was destined to succeed. As CEO, Altman's main job was to determine which of the 10,000 applications would attend YC's signature three-month program. Out of those 10,000, only 200 or so get accepted, making it twice as hard to get into as Stanford. Once in, startups give up 5-7% to of their equity in return for a $500,000 investment, access to experts, and a public launch. However, arguably the most valuable part of going to YC comes with the prestige of merely being associated with YC, an elite fraternity which includes unicorns such as Airbnb and DoorDash. During Altman's tenure, he shifted YC's focus to science and engineering startups, a strategy which paid off well. A short five years after Altman became CEO, the incubator boasted more than 100 companies valued at over $150 million and 19 companies at over $1 billion. Despite this, Altman said he has largely failed because a majority of companies that attend YC's program don't generate enough funding or business to stay solvent for very long. However, Altman said being wrong most of the time is merely the price he pays for being really right occasionally. And some of YC's predictions, such as billion dollar Dropbox, have hit really big. I, I think you want to look for the intersection of what you're good at, what you enjoy, and, and what, where you can create value for the world. And in my experience, if you don't find some of the intersection of those three, it's hard to really have an impact. At YC, 
Altman always advised young entrepreneurs to focus on a few things relentlessly. In this spirit, Altman left YC in 2019 to put his attention on his own company, OpenAI. He had started the company with SpaceX and Tesla CEO Elon Musk as a way to make sure AI didn't wipe out humanity. At the time, Musk and Altman had been haunted by doomsday scenarios such as the 2003 article The Paperclip Maximizer, in which an AI bot destroys the Earth in the pursuit of making the most paperclip possible, as well as systems such as Google's DeepMind going awire and prompting of dictators around the world. Even though OpenAI had a clear vision of what they don't want AI to do, their vision of ethic AI is rather vague. Soon after founding the company, Altman said, our goal right now is to do the best thing there is to do. This means that the company initially focused on AI for games, but then shifted towards basic research to develop chatbots. One of OpenAI's more concrete goals has been to make a chatbot that can pass the Turing test by tricking users into believing they are interfacing with another human. OpenAI's progress in this regard has been remarkable. In 2018, the company released its first text generator, GPT-1, which was unique due to its neutral networking with 117 parameters that could train itself to produce more human-like speech. In their latest version, GPT-3, its 175 billion parameters have astounded users by producing everything from a school essay to deal-closing business proposals. If you already think ChatGPT is spelling the death of work as we know it, just wait until 100 trillion parameter GPT-4 comes out later this year. Fortunately for us, Altman has purposefully made OpenAI a capped profit company, so he can distribute the benefits of AI throughout society while having the necessary funds to keep his business running. For Altman, he hopes to bring about a world of abundance through AI and his other ventures which include WorldCoin, a cryptocurrency that aims to give access to financial services in poor countries, Helion Energy, which hopes to solve the climate crisis with nuclear fusion, and several nonprofits that are exploring the feasibility of universal basic income. Only time will tell which of these ideas will take off and which will fall flat. Either way, Altman's success and more so his failure have inspired young entrepreneurs to keep changing the world relentlessly.